Okay, agenda. So Alan has did minutes ages ago from our July meeting. Um, just uh, does anybody have wish to move approval of those minutes? Oh, sure. Okay. Second. Do we have somebody doing minutes for today? Um, I was actually, it's actually your turn. Can you stand that? Okay, Kat. Well, is it your turn? You know, wait, <laughs> Alan McArdle. Yeah. Yes, it's your turn. It's your turn, Susan. Yep, that was me trying to convince the cat to go elsewhere. I, uh, hold on, let me get it set up. Ba, 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 ba. Google that. Okay. Okay, did somebody second? Somebody seconded. I right? did. Yes. Um, all in favor? Sure. Aye. Aye. Okay, great. I have to say though that I'm not caught up, but okay. <laughs> um, the center school, I, I put this on the agenda simply at first because um, the town is after a long period of inaction on the center school has resumed discussions about advertising, issuing an RFP for a developer for the school. Mm -hmm. um, and were they prompted by the threat of putting solar panels on the roof? No, 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 it was not even that logical. I think because <laughs> no. that was so logical. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I think my first response to Judy was something like, That seems really unlikely. And then I, then, well, you know, you were all seeing the emails. Um, so, um, uh, I simply thought that we, as the Historical Commission, should um, make a commitment to be stay on top of what is going on. Uh, it is, are, are you still hearing me? Mm -hmm. yep. 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 I'm getting messages from Zoom that say you are being signed out because you're signed in on another device. I, I mean, <laughs> I, it, that, is, that is me, Brian, by the way. <laughs> If you uh, if you should disappear, what do we do? I don't know. You want to make somebody else a co-host? I don't think calm and carry on. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I, there's nothing I, super urgent on the agenda. No, so. let, let's just let's just uh, hope that's we don't have to deal with that. Um, but Judy then did some work. Um, but, well, sorry. Let me. <laughs> the Zoom thing is distracting me. After the first report, which was in the Gazette, about the town's um, intent to uh, issue the RFP fairly soon, I, I don't remember what I wrote, but I wrote and asked Brian something, and he wrote, Brian Domina, and he wrote back to me and said, I'm inclined to recommend to the select board that the RFP um, require that the developer follow the Secretary of the Interior's um, standards for historic preservation. And I said, that would be terrific. And of course that would help them be eligible for some sorts of funding. And then Judy actually did work <laughs> instead of beyond offering. So Judy, do you just want to tell everybody else what you discovered? Yeah, well, I, I don't know how, I don't know why I'm echoing. Am I echoing for you? Okay. You are here. Okay. But not now. Okay. Um, I emailed Jen Doherty, who is the municipal contact from MHC, to ask if she knew whether tenants were eligible for the historic tax credit, long-term tenants. Um, the state, the state and the federal government both give 20 credits, tax credits income tax credits for preservation work on historic properties. And obviously you have to be, it has to be an income producing property for you to get income to offset, but it can be 20% of, up to 20% of the value of the rehabilitation work that's done. Mm -hmm. And they're each 20%, state and federal. Um, they're not easily come by, but they're worth a heck of a lot when you get them. And so I emailed Jen and said, did she know or could she 
direct me to find out whether a lessee, long-term lessee would be eligible. And she emailed back saying, she didn't work with this directly, but she knew that lessees had received the credit and that, but that the lease typically has to be very long. Um, and she said 50 years was wow. what she had remembered. Um, I don't know if that's written in stone. She also said that it was important that when you started thinking about the work and, and the involvement that uh, you start working with MHC up front so the things could be structured properly. And I think that's the gist of it. Yeah, that's what I remember. And, and, and you sent that to Brian. I sent that to Brian. Yeah, and then of course, as I think we all know, the following the secretary standards is also required for any eligibility for CPA funding. Yes, it's it's yeah. important for that. Also for any you, you, any historic preservation grant work, which can also go to mm -hmm. to income producing properties. But um, and I did talk to Brian afterwards, and he had. I think he hadn't really focused on the magnitude of the benefit. Um, he is of the opinion that there will probably not be, or had been of the opinion, that the RFP was unlikely to be successful because of the vast amount of work that's required. So we chatted and I also mentioned CPA and he said, well, would a lessee be eligible for CPA? And I said, I'm not sure. But it dawned on me afterwards that if the lessee wasn't, then probably the town would be, and maybe that's the way you could structure a lease or agreement. So I have not communicated that to him. It turned out that when they talked about it at town meeting, at, I'm sorry, select board meeting, that there was no discussion at all because what they were doing was waiting for, he's waiting for a sample lease from town council. But I think one of us, I think probably we should, when it's on the select board agenda, somebody from the commission should sit in. I, I do too. I, I, I um, We know that one member of the select board repeatedly says, and I'm relying on the minutes of the meeting, if we really are committed to keeping the building, despite the rec recommendation of the ad hoc committee, which was very much very much in favor of keeping the building. So I think we need to continue to, and we don't know about the other two. I have a suspicion that one is in support of keeping the building, but otherwise we have a, a new person. So I think I'm not, really? suggesting, I'm not suggesting just to be clear, anything adversarial. I, I'm simply suggesting we shouldn't take a point of view for granted. Later on in the meeting, there was a discussion about some form of community grant that Hannah wanted to prioritize topics for. And it was, they thought the maximum would be $20,000. And one of the subjects that Hannah and Brian had recommended was, was agriculture. And Julie waxed quite eloquent about the possibility of having farmers markets with um, arcades on the grounds of the center school. And I, it's it's oh, less I mean, I, like you know I don't arcades is maybe the wrong word but um, a a place for farmers markets in the center of town where people could congregate, which is a nice thought. I don't think that's the site for it, but um, but and no, there was no discussion. It was it was by then <laughs> what it seemed like a well winnowed list of five topics out of something like 40 started foundering and foundering and Brian and finally cut it off. Is the, is the ad hoc committee thoroughly disbanded now? I think so. Leslie was on it. Well, and, was Judy, on and Judy was on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know that it, it's certainly more abundant whether it's officially disbanded. Or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the members has moved out of state. The, the woman with the marketing. Yeah. Yeah, she was nice to work with. 
Um, okay, so so. Uh, so that's all we know. I, I really just wanted to be on our agenda. <laughs> and I, Judy, you know, I was just coming back in from um, from France, but I will be happy to make sure you don't, you're not always the one who has to sit through the whole select board meeting. <laughs> to well, see if they... <laughs> I, I, I sat through because of a planning board issue, which was uh -huh. much later on the agenda. Okay, okay. Anybody else have anything to say about, about that? Um, the next item on our agenda, we must table because the CPC meeting last week didn't happen because of a complicated and still mysterious failure of our Zoom support system. Well, um, it was precipitated by my, my uh, error in having a different Zoom link on the agenda than on the public hearing yet, which Right. Not helpful. That is nice of you to say, but there were other problems. There were. <laughs> so there were. so, um, so uh, that discussion will not take place before the latter part of October at the earliest at this point. Don't you, do you think, am I, I'm right in that, Judy? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think that takes us to the Waitley Diner. Do you all have a draft letter for me? Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a little backstory to that. Well, maybe I should go back to square one. We had talked many months ago about pursuing a listing for the Waitley Diner, and I had said that I would try to spearhead it. And I finally got to it. And I contacted Amy Schrader for the name of the F.L. Roberts person that had come before the planning board looking for a special permit about 18 months ago or two years. And she got back to me and said, well, they've su subsequently sold it. And to, oh, really? to Norea Energy yeah. based uh, in uh, Worcester. Uh, I knew that because, the, not because I saw a notice of the sale but because there was something in the newspaper recently about the Waitley Diner that mentioned Noria. And I, I didn't know if F.L. Roberts had changed their name or it was an well, entire I thought other maybe, entity. I thought actually maybe F.L. Roberts. I, I looked at the assessor's listing and it listed Noria. And I thought, well, maybe F.L. Roberts is a subsidiary of Noria and I should still contact this person. Um, but anyway. So she gave, she had a contact. Oh, this went them. out. Go ahead. <laughs> Keep you going. okay? <laughs> I'm fine. Um, okay. I'm on a, on a battery, so. <laughs> you look like you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what I am. Uh, some things are still working. Well, they're on battery backup. So keep going. <laughs> there is okay. no battery backup. Everything's out. No, it's here. It's not out okay. there. Everything is okay. out in the kitchen. Oh, you're on the meeting. I'm yeah. sorry, I beg your pardon. <laughs> okay, okay, well, go ahead. Amy had I'll a contact at, at Maria and got me the name of this Daniel Nujaguna. Um, and so I, I thanked her and I emailed her for Amy's reference. I said, well, maybe it would be helpful to you to have these two documents about what it means to be listed on the National Register, because I thought if she's getting in the middle of this, maybe people would be coming and asking her and she, that might be helpful. Well, she thought I meant that she should forward them to, to the Nuria guy, and she did. So he emailed me back and asked if, if this was, uh, if we had, and he, he put it past tense, an individual listing or an area listing. So I emailed back and said, well, there is no listing at all at this point, and we'd like to pursue one. And I sent him an email with, with um, also the inventory attached, because he had the other two documents, and said essentially the arguments that are in there and said, if, if you're not the right person within the company to field this question, maybe you could give me the right, Eureka, the right uh, yes. contact person 
And what I had intended to do was send a cover letter with, with you know, outlining what we're trying to do and why. And I never heard back from it. Yeah. So I figured I should go ahead with the cover letter anyway and send it either snail mail or email and thought that you would like to review it first. Power keeps going out here, but I am still here. It's, it's the miracle going. of West Sweetly. It so, is, yeah. So, so, so close. Back, we hope. So Mr. Um, Mr. Naria does not yet have any version of your, your actual letter. No. Yeah, okay. Okay. I thought your letter looked great. I thought it was informative and um, what's the opposite of threatening? Like, you know, inviting and- Welcoming. Yeah, well, thank yep. you. <laughs> Chatty. No, I encouraging, and, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's no downside. You know, we're doing a good thing for you. Yep. How it read to me. So you did a great job in my mind. Um, I agree. I, I I have a couple of tiny copy editing suggestions, which I think I can just send to you, Judy, and you can but have them or use them or not use them. I picked up a couple <laughs> commas just printing it out. So. Yeah. It's, it's, well, who did we just, who just canceled? Someone important just decided to, they would not use the Oxford comma. I don't remember who it was. <laughs> it was a, it's an entity, not an individual. Yes. Um, uh, I had one other question. Yeah, there was something about the first paragraph that bothered me a little bit, but not not a whole lot. Just a matter well, of I'm clarification, happy to... I think. I was if... pretty tired when I wrote it, so yeah. I'll yeah. I'll uh, I, it. I wondered, I wondered if you it's clear in your supporting material, which I have scanned very briefly, <laughs> but it is clear that the building has to be 50 years old to be eligible. And I wonder if, if, if that's worth saying in the letter, that the reason this hasn't come up, I mean, now it's 60 years old. Um, that's a good uh, point. Yeah. I'd rather- you know, For all you know, this guy's never seen this diner. Well, I'd rather not go there because the, I think the historical commission, the inventory eligibility recommendation kind of overrides that. Mm -hmm. But if you think it's important, um, actually, the building is older than the 50 years. It's just. Right. The building is 63 years old now. Yeah. I do my math right. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, yeah, I can add it, but I, I don't think. He seems to understand. He at least, I mean, when he's going the difference between individual and area listings, he sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Uh, well, he certainly knows something. Of, yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, I think it's I think it's good. Um, I mean, it, we won't get anywhere if if MHC decides it's not eligible anyway. And it did dawn on me afterwards. Probably the place to start was to update the inventory, but. First, but this gives me an excuse to ask if I can use the photos from the website. Mm -hmm. Do you need someone to take some photos? I mean, I may. I may. It's not hard. Okay. Probably be a good idea. We should update the inventory anyway. But um, does that include interior photos? Or yeah, is that yeah, includes interior. It's nice Art Deco interior stuff in there. And the MHC. Uh, requirements as I recall do they require printing them on canon paper what? um they're they're very spe very specific requirements. actually the last time I did it well I use canon paper because I have a canon printer and it comes out um why yeah, do we archival say what quality brand of paper way. we use. That seems very peculiar. No, it, it, it was a requirement for archival printing, and Canon Inc. will print archivally. Okay, I, I'm with, leaving out. Yeah, I'm leaving but, out. The, but yeah. anyway, the last time I sent one, Peter Stott said, Well, as long as we have the disc, you don't need to worry about, about all the um, originals of the prints of the photos and the, all the archival stuff. So while they haven't relaxed the written word, the, the operative word seems to be a bit less formal. 
I just had a flashback. This is a, a separate subject for dealing with the MHC of Alan, do you remember when you and I sat and we, what we had to do in the way we presented the photographs for the preservation grant? I felt like we were in fourth grade together, reading the guidelines, <laughs> sitting at my yeah. breakfast table, making well, sure the margins were the right, right. you know. Put your you name know, in the upper left-hand corner. I really yeah. have no idea. I just, <laughs> and the requirements have changed over the last few years too. So they, the archival requirements are different than they used to be, I think. Mm -hmm. but, well, anyway, that's right. That's a, we're, we're we'll figure that out. We'll figure my experience goes back fifty years of this. So, um, so the first thing to do, Judy, you think, is simply get the Norea guy to I, to endorse it. Yeah, I think so. Um, we can go ahead with the inventory anyway because we don't need their permission for that. But um, mm -hmm. I would start the ball rolling if if they endorse it, then we can. Ask them for help with with history uh, and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds great. Um, do we have any other business? <laughs> no, power keeps going out here. So, <laughs> good luck I, with supper. I, I, yeah. I have, yeah, exactly. We'll I have something up. I have a um, and I hope entertaining hidden history announcement, which is that. Um, we have discovered documentation about the first slot machines in Waverly, And it, there's actually a lot of, well, I think I discovered it and then Allison discovered a great deal of interesting supporting material. So if I am ever again at my desk for 20 straight minutes, there will, we will add the first slot machines to the well, technological wait, like pinball machines or gambling? No, machines. Slot, ma gambling, slot machines, gambling, you know, slot, slot machines. machines. Put in hmm. your coin and win a prize, maybe. You know, like ding, 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 the fruit. <laughs> Where was this located? Yeah. They were at the and, post office. What? No, were they? Yeah, well, the store oh, on the post office were right next to each other at the Waitley Inn. It was, so they were at the Waitley Inn, yes. Yeah, they and, were out. I, 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 I believe my impression was they were like outside on the porch. And they were also, of course, at the Maplewood Hotel. This was in the first decade we're, of 20th we're, right, century. Sin City. Because, you know, have vice will be here. If there's <laughs> any vice going on, it's at the Maplewood Hotel. Well, well, they, ha they were only in town for a few years because they were already illegal when they were installed in town and then yeah. they were removed rapidly. But it's very, it's actually very interesting about the technology. What was the uh, name of the, the, the squad that came in and removed them? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Oh, I don't it know. It's, it's behind me, and it has a wonderfully euphemistic kind of name. But the so the oversight committee, this is oddly contemporary, was <laughs> primarily concerned with the banning of books and written material that offended their um, Aryan Christian masculine ethos. Eth 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 yeah. Ethos, let's say. Um, but by the 60s, the same article with this extraordinary name, sorry, the same entity had turned into a pretty progressive human rights organization. Um, it is not in Waitley. I mean, this is the, this is the interesting tangent that we got on. <laughs> um, so that's that. I can't think of anything else that we've added. When, when, were, the, when were the slot machines? They in the are. 19, the first decade of the 20th century. Yeah, they've been around for a while, but of course they didn't get to Waitley for a couple of decades, but when they did, it caused a, a, well, they would a have slight had electricity, so. No, they were yeah, mechanical, they you know, didn't oh, okay. need, yeah, I think I, I imagine them as being like early adding machines, you know, kind of mechanically, okay. probably made a great sound. <laughs> what like was the cash this? registers that were mechanical. Like the like those and banks typewriters and, and everything fancy else, fancy banks, the fancy coin, yeah. lead coin banks. right? Exactly, but for profit. But um, what did these appear? Teens, the nineteen teens, nineteen. No, no, they no, they were here in the first decade of the twentieth century. Right, the Maplewood Hotel was gone in by nineteen ten. So um, then they moved to the speakies. <laughs> yes, right, right, right. So I will now that I've said this to you. I really, I will. Get that thing on the map soon. <laughs> we'll have to get it in Whiteley after dark in the exhibit. 
Yes. Yeah, we, 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 we had about three or four different categories we thought it could go in. Right, right. And play. Yeah, after yeah. dark. Uh, yes, exactly. So, um, well, I think we are then finished. Do you agree? Okay. Oh, I, oh, Alan is talking to Ginny. Alan's in mourning for the Queen. I think Ginny's turned the lights out to honor the ah. funeral today. They've been listening to Elton John and Elgar all day. It's just something amusing to me about that combination. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next meeting. Yeah. Did you see the British flag hanging on the house next to the post office today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. somebody was honoring it. Aw. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a huge British flag on a private residents in uh, New Haven. I would have had the, the British flag. As I said, I, I have been watching since 4.30 this morning, but my family would have disowned me if they'd have known. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I want to um, come back. There you go. Good, good. Our next meeting, uh, Judy, to your question, our next meeting is on the calendar for October 17th at 5 p.m. So, shall we adjourn? Yep. Awesome. Okay. Great. Bye. Yep. Later. <laughs> Bye. Bye.